Happy Thursday. I hope you're all doing okay. Uh, for my Thursday thought, I was thinking a little bit about compromise and not compromising before God. Um, so in Matthew 6 verse 24, it says, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. Um, I was reading the story of Daniel, and uh, it's set around when the Israelites were taken to Babylon as exiles. And uh, there's Daniel and his friends, and they keep on finding uh, problems put in their path by the king, uh, by different people. And every time they always make sure they put God first, despite what the consequences may be. So in uh, chapter 1 verse 8, um, Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the Babylonian food. He ate only what um, he was allowed to in, by God's law. He uh, only wanted to eat the vegetables and drink only water. And there was a dispute about this because um, the, person, the person looking after them said they had to eat the Babylonian food, otherwise they will become weak and he will be, he will be executed. But um, in the end, uh, Daniel proved it by following God's law, God's command. It glorified God uh, and um, he and his friend ended up the most um, strong and healthy looking people of the lot. Um, in chapter 3 verse 12, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego refused to conform and worship, worship the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Um, despite the penalty being death, they would not allow themselves to give up on God and compromise on who God was. Uh, later on in the chapter, in verse 15, uh, Nebuchadnezzar even gave them a second chance uh, while they were standing in the jaws of death, and yet they still refused. Um, they still refused to worship this statue, they said, only God. And um, yeah, they did not compromise, and God rewarded this by saving them from the furnace, from the fiery furnace, and turning it to his glory, because Nebuchadnezzar saw what had happened in the furnace. He saw this uh, other man in the furnace, and he thought, wow, that's amazing, and he praised God. Uh, and also in, in Daniel chapter 6, um, uh, Darius, the king of Persia, had come. And uh, Daniel, uh, and they said an edict that everybody had to worship him for a set period of time. But Daniel didn't. He continued to worship his God three times a day. He continued to pray to God three times a day. And um, this led to a series of events. Uh, it's when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And God saved him from the jaws of the lion. And again, by not compromising, God's glory came through. Uh, and Daniel came out and touched, and Darius saw the power of God. These men could have had so many excuses for, for ignoring God or for compromising on God. Uh, they could have said, um, we, will, we will just bow down to the statue, but we won't be sincere. They could have said, we will just ask God for forgiveness afterwards. They could have said, God will understand that we're just doing what we're told. Uh, they could think, the king gave us high positions that we can use to help our fellow exiles. We can't lose them by, by dying as a consequence. Um, or we're just following the customs of a foreign land. They could have thought, it's not as bad as the idols our ancestors worshipped. Or even just, we're not hurting anyone. Despite this, they refused to allow any situation uh, to let them compromise God, to come before God. They always put God first. Um, and um, we, are, we are very rarely faced with life and death scenarios like these guys are. But we still find ways to do our own thing, I think. Uh, in Exodus 20 verse 3, uh, this is the Ten Commandments. And the very first commandment is that is for the Israelites to have no other God before Yahweh. We allow so many things in our lives to come first, whether that may be casting a good image of ourselves or passing up on an opportunity to tell someone that Jesus loves them because we're worried about what they will think. I often think to myself, next time I will, when I'm more prepared and I know more things, or God will forgive me if I say this about someone. In all of these things, you're compromising on who God is as our Lord and Saviour. 
Jesus bled and died to give us new life. He bought us at a price, and we need to strive to remember that in everything we do. Jesus did not compromise in his mission to save us, and we should not compromise in our calling to serve him. Psalm 119 verse 10 I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. How many of us can say that we are following the psalmist's example here? Uh, to follow God with all our heart. It's worth pausing to think about your actions and asking yourself if what you're about to do is the right thing. Uh, Ephesians 6 verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly world. Every time we allow ourselves to compromise on God, we are effectively giving evil more of a foothold in the world, whereas when we put God first, we are fighting back against the evil. This passage goes on about the armour of God, which is freely at our disposal to help us keep Jesus as our light. We need to make sure we use it. When we contemplate our relationship with God, we need to remember that all mankind worship something. Some, some people choose to worship God, and as a result can reap the joy that he intends for his children. Others distance themselves by worshipping the gods of pride, greed, power and lust, which ultimately lead to suffering. In the wilderness, Satan tempted Jesus with earthly power and unimaginable riches, but Jesus turned Satan away and turned to God. We must also turn to God. The question we need to ask is, does God rule in our hearts? Uh, Vance Havner, I think that's how you pronounce it, the American evangelist said this, Jesus Christ is the first and the last author and finisher, beginning and end, alpha and omega, and by him all other things hold together. He must be first or nothing. God never comes next. Uh, I'm going to pray. Uh, dear Lord, I pray that you'll help us when we are in a decision and we know that we need to put you first in that decision and we know that we need to bring you with us in that decision and um, pray that we will be able to hold you tight in our hearts. We will be able to let you rule in our hearts and take charge. We will allow you to shine through us, to glorify you um, the same way that Daniel and his friends were able to glorify you. Um, we know that it's so easy to want to do our own thing, to be a bit selfish, to uh, look the other way, but Lord, you are you are our saviour and um, we really need to think about you in everything we do. Amen.